Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, as every morning, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We come before you to thank you again for waking us up this morning and to remind us as long as we have this life we have hope that we yet have a bit a bit more time however long however short at this moment we still have time to turn away from those things which are which actually leads us to destruction and to come to you to believe that you are the God who redeems us from all destruction, from all sins, from all corruption, and that we can allow you to reign in our, in our hearts, in our minds, to purify us from all, all that is corrupt, dear Lord, all manner of darkness, all manner of sin, all manner of corruption. So I thank you again for being who you are. I can list of the many blessings that you have given us and the many things that you have done for us. Nevertheless, because it would be that I will be thanking you for eternity, which is is right. I just pray this morning and thank you for everything that you have done for us, your people, your creation. And let us pray as always, dear Lord, that we are using this time wisely and not be taken away with the cares of this life. I do pray this, dear Lord, that we're not becoming distracted with stuff, with mammon, that we're not being led astray with our own hearts and our own desires, but that we cast all our cares upon you because you care for us and that we are asking each and every day that you keep us according to your good acceptable perfect and holy will i ask also each and every day that whilst we traverse this life every season every test every trial that we are victorious in you dear lord jesus christ winning these many battles because you already won the war against sin and death and we know that believing in you and hoping in you having our faith in you we shall obtain the promises upon your return. Lord Jesus Christ, as always, our youth and our children, as much as possible as you have given us, I pray that you in us lead them on the right path all the days of their lives so that they, when they are of age, they can do likewise, never leaving or forsaking you. So lead us in spirit and in truth, in your more in your word this morning and make us of one mind in you lord jesus christ to the glory of god our heavenly father we pray amen <clears throat> all right so romans chapter 5 verse 1 says therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ amen all right so being justified by faith so so, just ahead in our Bible says, No flesh justified by the law. And on the other side, it says, Abraham was justified by faith. So, the scripture tells us what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right? And I'm not, it's not, that's not my word. It actually says it verbatim in the scripture. And if you think about it, if somebody is a person who is righteous, a person who keeps their word, a person who is in charge of everything, and they tell you something and you say, Nasa, mm -mm, I'm going to believe you. <laughs> You're not really honoring that person, are you? You're not going to please that person because you don't trust them. You don't believe that they are capable or they are able or they are willing to do the things that they have told you that they will do god has been promising us stuff from the beginning of time right he 
told us and prophesied of the, the, the coming of the Christ, our Lord Jesus, in, in Genesis, right? After the man fall, after Adam and Eve fell from, from his grace, well, well, let me say fell from his grace, fell into sin in that they were disobedient. Right, and um, we see right throughout scripture also that um, the all right, let me go back on point. So, the, the justification by faith is showing you that nobody of themselves can please God, right? We can't of our innate self please God, we have to please Him through doing what He asks us to do, right. Because, as I said, I was just giving the example. If you don't do what he, he asks you to do, how then are you honoring his his command, his word? How, are, how else are you honoring him? Again, the reason why I say it's, it's, it's impossible to do it of ourselves because the Lord has told us to do pretty much to be holy, right? He actually instructed us to be holy and without blame and without sin. From the beginning of time there's no command that god gives us that allows us to sin right unfortunate for us we have been corrupt we have been corrupt through one's man disobedience because through adam all have sinned because sin entered into the world and all have learned how to sin right but guess what god is faithful in that Whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And not only that, he also came and taught us how it is we ought to be living a life that is faithful, or should I say, yeah, faithful, righteous, and holy before our God, which is the, the only way. That's why I said this is the only way we can actually please him if we actually line up our lives with our Lord Jesus <clears throat> and ask him to reign in us, to do the work in us, because as I said, if we try to do it of our own self, our own works is futile, right? Because we're going to fail each and every time. Nevertheless, Christ Jesus has conquered all things. So if he is in us doing the work, if we believe on him, have faith in him that he's more than capable to do it and that he will, he will give us those things which he promised, then shall we be able to please our Heavenly Father. So the justification by faith, we have examples, as I just gave the heading of my Bible, one person which is profound in the in the in the in the scriptures about having faith is Abraham. Right? And we saw Abraham why some things where Abraham did do like people would look at it now and say like, something did wrong with him, but no, nothing was wrong with him. He actually was showing true righteousness. Right, we saw where he was tested quite a few. Um, yeah, he was tested. We saw where he was tested, and he, without without hesitation, which always baffles me. Like without hesitation, he just he just did what the Lord commanded him to do, and we saw why he was the one chosen to have the lineage of you know Isaac, Jacob, who is Israel, and we know the twelve patriarchs. We have um, Judah from them and through judah we have ultimately the christ coming into into the world right so his faithfulness his hope his trust in our god led to or we we being able to have christ coming into this world and through christ we have salvation right so he was justified by his faith based on his acts right because as the word said also faith without works is dead so he believed on god and it was it was given to him as righteousness he believed him and he just followed every single word that the god, the lord our god commanded him so we have these examples right mm -hmm. our faith is should never be in ourselves never be in mankind never be in substance of this world right and i say this loosely i know we have to be very mindful very watchful in these things Right, so we don't get taken away. And as I said, if we believe that Christ Jesus is the Lord God, uh, the Lord God Almighty revealed unto us, right, and that through Him we have eternal life and uh, and all the promises that have been prophesied from the beginning of time, then this again is 
the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And through faith in him, we are justified. We are justified by him to our God, right? So I'll leave it at that this morning. Yeah, I'll leave it at that this morning. Read the chapter for yourself. Anything that you want to share, drop in the comment section or send it into the word at eatreach1.org. And as much as the Lord has led me, taught me and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. So have a blessed day, everyone. And God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.